Welcome back to the Making Regalia with Joaquin Lone Launch here in Concho, Oklahoma. Uh, we had a little latency with the weather. Uh, in the transition of like the cold weather and stuff, um, the time between the shows, I actually lost part of my um, design work, but I actually brought these ones from home. We're going to finish up this episode of actually the beginning start of how to do applique with these designs, and we still got the feel of actually how to create the designs to transfer the designs to the material to transfer it to our medium. We're going to continue on today uh, to just the finishing steps. So let's get started right off the bat. Um, once again, we're going to be working with Heap On and our templates. These templates I brought from home, these are the ones I actually use for most of my design work. And if you look, these ones are actually masking taped out. Uh, like I said before in my shows, uh, I like to use masking tape because I can continue using these designs over and over and over if I need to. And the masking tape actually helps them uh, to be more dur durable. So let's get started. Um, I think the beginning of the shows uh, we actually went through, and I'm going to go through this really rough, uh, really quick. Uh, we actually designed these designs out, and then I cut them out, and then what I did is uh, it started with the first rectangle here, and then I, I actually did the triangle internally, and then I did every shape individually, and then from there I came up with these designs. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer these materials onto uh, your uh, heat bond here with a pencil, then cut them out, and then we're going to apply them to the material, iron them, and then continue on from there. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we'll take our templates. We're going to be using a medium. Right now, we're going to do a little kid's uh, sweatshirt here. Uh, I bought this at Walmart, you know, just a little tiny one. I think this is a 5T. Um, my daughter's coming into town, so I think I'm going to make her a new one of these. I made one for her in the past, but of course I don't think, I think she might have lost it. Or, so we're going to do a new one real quick. So we're going to do two teepees, one on the front and one on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my te uh, template twice. Every design that we're going to use, we're going to use it two times. So right off the bat, take this, and I'm going to outline it twice. Take my pencil here. Now you'll see when you start doing design work like this, this is usually the most time consuming part because you know you're always drawing it out and then you know you have to transfer it. So drawing out is actually most time consuming compared to actually sewing it. Sewing, once I actually get to the sewing level, it usually flies by but drawing stuff out, heat bond it and actually transfer, um, cutting the designs out is what takes the longest. So from here, you look, I've actually got two uh, rectangles. And what I like to do at the very beginning is when you actually transfer this uh, to material, um, before you actually do it, I like to cut around the boxes. And this is actually to save time, because once I actually transfer it to material, um, I'm actually going to cut this uh, right on the lines. This will, uh, actually, uh, this will actually save you a step when you go through it. So there's two boxes here. And then here are the other designs that I'm going to incorporate, which I'm going to do two of these, each of these. Let's see. So all you do is you just take your design, and we're going to do it two times. Trace these out. And continue on. To save space sometimes, what I'll do is I'll flip this and put it adjacent to like my last design. And this allows me to save space. And what I mean by space is actually my heat bond. That continue on will actually uh, save you a little bit of money because you're not using a lot of the heat bond that you want. Another design that we're going to use. Here's our steps. Now, when you transfer all into these um, different designs, you know you can color coordinate all any any actual colors that you want with this, the different materials. Me, I like to use darkest to lightest. You know, I'll use like traditional colors, but you know you're free to use whatever colors you want, and you know whatever you know types of colors that you have in your beadwork, you can use these to actually match them. You know, like I sometimes I'll take beadwork, take them to like my uh, local like fabric store. And uh, I can usually match up material just by the bead colors alone. That way you correlate with you know, your outfit and you get all your co uh, colors to match. So there's two. 
And from here, we're going to get two more of these. Now, if you see, when I do trace these, I'm not trying to put all the designs right next to each other, because like I said, we're actually not going to cut right on the lines. And I kind of want to get a little space between each design. And got two more here. And we are almost done. We're getting a lot of re uh, response already about our show. You know, everyone's been giving me good thoughts and, you know, giving me praise and stuff. And I appreciate that for you guys for tuning in. You know, um, I want to continue on with doing the show and bring you more steps that we can hand. Um, I believe next we're going to start doing our beadwork sessions. So that'll be our next step up. And, you know, I just want to thank everyone out there, to, you know, for tuning in. You know, I've been getting nothing but uh, positive response. And, you know, it kind of gives me uh, a feeling to continue on with these shows. And once again, I just want to thank everyone out there. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut out all our designs. So what you first want to do, instead of cutting like right on the line, like I, like I said, is we'll cut these out, just like so. Now, you just want to get close to the line, you don't really like get right on it. Because every one of these is going to be a different color. And they'll need their own little space. So every piece is still here. There, we have all our pieces together. And now what we're going to go is we're actually going to transfer this to the material. I've done this many, many times, you know, it's like, this is a set that, you know, I've always said this will actually keep you up late at night sometimes. Um, it's always awesome, you know, if you get con someone else helping you do this kind of work. Um, the sewing is actually the, me uh, the best part I like to do because it's really fast and I'm, I'm you know, it's kind of like the finishing touch. Usually when I get to sewing, that's usually, when I know, you know, it's almost when I'm getting close to the finish line. So the materials that I, I want to uh, use on this set is we're going to go from um, uh, actual like uh, um, a print material and then internally we're going to use all um, colors that are just um, flats, flat colors as far as blues, reds, orange, and a yellow, uh, and a gold too. But what I like to do is uh, to bring out the print, um, I use these um, kind of base colors first. So, what I'm going to use the bait and top part for, I'm actually going to use this white. This white, you know, like you can use just any type of material that you want to work with. This one I really like to work with. It's, it's kind of got a nice print to it, you know, it's got a little color, so my, my daughter's going to like the pink. It's kind of her favorite color. I think I mentioned in the past, you know, I've been working with material for years and years. This is where you'll start to learn what, what materials, you know, the uh, heat density of some. Some of these, you know, like you can turn your iron on way hot. Some of the stuff like this, not so hot. You really got to watch it when you use your iron because this stuff, it, it's awesome to work with, but it does not take heat very well. Okay. Now what we're going to do, um, like I said before, you know, heat bond. You have your adhesive side on one side, and you have your paper. Uh, once you actually do heat bond the material on there, what it does, it'll actually leave the adhesive onto the material. That allows you to transfer uh, this material, once you cut it out, to whatever medium you want to work with. So I'm going to do right here. I want to stay away from these edges right here, because sometimes you'll have like material 
Um, that's usually how when they manufacture it, you'll see like little uh, rough edges. I don't want that to be in my design, so I don't really want to iron right over that because that'll actually be into my design work. So I'll actually go right above it. Just like so. Now, if you see, you know, it's kind of starting to be a little transparent. You can tell, like, the actual the adhesive is actually melted onto the material. You want to take a little bit of time right at the beginning because you don't want to lift this just right off the bat because the heat will actually start to make it bubble and whatnot. And then again, you'll have to re-iron it. So I like to let it sit just for a little bit, let it cool, and then I'll just cut around it. Now, you can usually check on both sides. You might see a little bit of bubble marks and stuff. And it's not a problem. You know, don't get worried. You know, you didn't ruin anything. Um, all you need to do is, you know, get you a flat surface and just re-iron it just to get the bubbles out. This happens quite a bit. And usually, like, I, I like to just go in a straight forward motion. And there, pretty much all the bubbles are gone. So that one's done. And what I'll do is now we're going to go exact and cut right on our line. Always use really you know, sharp scissors. That way you can get it, your cut accurate. Because if you use something that you know, isn't really that sharp, you'll get frayed edges and it takes a little bit more time to cut. These ones I just bought at my local Walmart. And these ones are really, really good. I don't really skimp on my scissors because I use them all the time. So sometimes you got to just invest in some good ones. Usually my mom's got good scissors, so I like to go to her house and I'll just steal hers. But she doesn't know that, so. And let's see. And we are done. Now we got our square. And if you look, it'll look just like our square from here. So what we're going to do is that our, the top, actually, this piece right here is going to be our top part of our TP. It doesn't look like it just yet, but it will. Let's see. All right, now the next color up, we're going to go lightest to darkest. And I chose this blue. And what we're going to do is the exact same thing over again. Right again, you know, you kind of want to prep your material, kind of get it ironed flat, kind of defeats, you know, get us all the air bubbles out at the beginning. There we go. Flip it over, kind of check your material. You kind of see it's kind of a little rough there. You kind of got some air bubbles and stuff. So we just want to smooth these out. Just kind of in a forward motion. Kind of take your material and just straighten it out. Usually, like uh, when I use my iron, I don't like to use uh, the. Um, I like to turn the steam off, and I'll turn my iron all the way up. The steam will actually make it cause air bubbles too, so you don't really want to use the steam too much. And make sure, you might sometimes just want to invest in an iron uh, that you really kind of in a way don't, want to, don't really care about, because what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of glue on here. Um, there are um, like products that you can buy at Walmart that you can remove the glue, <clears throat> but you, know, you don't want to actually use the same iron if, say, if you're going to iron your work clothes, because it will stain it. So sometimes I like to get, like with my house, I have an iron that I just use just for materials and stuff alone. Because um, you really don't want to mess up your nice clothes with glues and other things. And, you know, like uh, the other things I pick up on with my iron is like uh, sequins and everything else. So you don't want to go to work with sequins all over you. So, 
Continuing on, I can do this and cut this uh, design out. Okay, continue on with our colors and going through all my colors that we're working with. Uh, working on my red now, like I said, you know, it's pretty much the same thing over and over. What we're going to do is just continue transferring our heat bond designs onto our material. <clears throat> Once there, you know, check your material. Make sure you got all the air bubbles out. This is something I, I really like to do because it just it makes your designs look more neat, more accurate. And, you know, get all your material perfectly flat. Because once you finish up your design, you know, that's pretty much your work. And I like to have all my stuff nice and neat. Takes a little bit more time, but, you know, it's worth it in the end. So with this one, you'll start to see kind of like what we're going to be doing. Pretty much all these uh, materials here, we're going to be stacking one on top of the other. And when we finish, it's going to be a pretty nice little design. This is the part where you really need your family members or need someone to come in. Because if you're going to design stuff, it's always nice to just be able to design and push the workload off to somebody else. But not you'll be up really late doing all this by yourself. Let's see. There. If you see, that's how your design is going to start to look. We're going to continue on and add more design work to that. Slowly but surely we're getting there. Catching up on previous episodes of Making Regalia is now easy. Just visit catv47.com. Joaquin's projects and detailed instructions are all accessible on our new website 24-7. Be sure to check out all the CATV47 programs and videos at CATV47.com. Okay, we are back, and by the power of magic and television, I created all these in an instant. Um, usually it would take you a little bit of time, but with, uh, with the skills that I have and, you know, like the cameras and stuff, we got these all done in no, no time at all. So now what we're going to do is we got all our designs cut out. We're going to go and take the adhesive off the back, off of here, and transfer it onto our next piece. So all you do is just pull the piece off. If you see, the heat bond actually um, has added the adhesive, and the adhesive actually stayed on some material. So what you do is just pull it here, place it. I like to just eyeball it, you know. I mean, I don't really like to find the center. I can pretty much do it just by eyeballing it. I place it down here, and then once again with my iron, all I do is just heat bond it again. We're going to do this um, for every single piece of material but what I like to do is um, I'll transfer one piece of material to the next, sew this in. I like to sew uh, the gold onto the yellow first, then pull the other piece off, um, um, heat bond it onto the other material, sew the yellow onto the next piece of material. Because the only reason why I like to do this is because if you sewed every, if you heat bond it every piece right off the bat, you're going to start to gunk up your needle because your needles actually have to go every through every single material. Um, that can cause your machine to start missing balance, uh, actually throw the timing off. And so the less material that you use to sew on, the better. Uh, that way, that's the way I like to do is just one piece to the one piece to the next piece. So from here, we're going to go ahead and sew this gold one in. Uh, for the gold, um, I used to like, to, I, I like to change out threads, but since the, we're using gold, I'm going to go ahead and use the white. And then on the yellow, we're actually going to outline this with a yellow. So let me load my machine real quick. Now, like I said in the previous uh, shows, 
After it's been heat bond, you don't really have to worry about the material bouncing around. And there we have it. See, our first design is already sewn in. We don't have to worry about it falling off or anything like that. It is tacked down and ready to go. Um, next up, we'll do the same with the next uh, triangle and next gold piece. So all I do is take it here, eyeball it right in the dead center. We got one good looking design after that. Heat bond it, my magic wand, and voila. We are good to go. Just like magic, it is on there. Bam, just like that, we are back and I've sewn all my designs together. First, we started off with uh, cutting all these designs out and stacking them. You know, like I said, you know, you want to actually uh, do one at a time because you don't want to gunk up your needles. So, of course, you know, what you do is you do one, then the next color, then the next color, then the next color on top of that. A finished product, you'll come out with something like this. This is how our design actually came out. Uh, pretty good looking design we got here. Uh, all we got to do now is we're at the very uh, finishing part is we're going to transfer this onto our medium. Our medium meaning our, our little jacket here. So all we're going to do, find top dead center. Usually the cool part is that usually when I get these new ones from Walmart, you actually see very hiddenly there's an iron mark. Um, that is actually your center. I've measured it many times and that is your dead center or your jacket. That's the cool part about buying stuff brand new. You'll actually have that. Uh, but, you know, if you don't, you can actually measure it out. Use maybe some chalk to actually get your center mark. Your center is very important so because that's where you're going to put the tip of, like, uh, your teepee. All you've got to do now is just uh, pull the heat bond off here. Place it right there. Center it up, eye level. Um, heat bond that. And what we're going to do is heat bond actually on top of the teepee. And there you go. And then all I've got to do now is just go ahead and heat bond this and uh, tack it down on my sewing machine. And this jacket's ready to go and ready for the winter. Okay, so now what we're doing is uh, we're actually going to transfer this onto um, the, our jacket. Uh, I started to heat bond this. You know, like I said, you know, you want to get a good heat bond on here because uh, once you start sewing, you don't want this to bounce around. Um, this is kind of material. It, it'll actually soak up the glue pretty well. Um, you kind of want to watch it, you know, I've got a pretty good base on here and usually I can hold it with my hand when I sew it in there to hold it down. Um, so we're going to continue on this and we'll have this jacket ready to go. The points are kind of going to be a little hard uh, to actually corner, so what I like to do is actually leave my needle in there, rotate my material, you know, kind of show who's boss, you know, you don't want to let it, you know, run all over you. The first step when you first do this one, kind of let it come up real softly because sometimes you can get the needle stuck and the thread stuck. Okay, we have finished our design finally. Took, you know, almost five weeks to do, but we finally finished our design. Um, right now, you know, this is what it's going to, finished product's going to look like on the back. Uh, I'm going to finish up later on and do the front one. Um, and in the front, it's going to be kind of cool because uh, you have the zipper to kind of work with uh, later on. But, you know, what I'm going to have to do is cut this design in half, put it on both sides of the zipper, and kind of get it to fit. You don't want to get too close to the zipper. If you ever sew on top of the zipper, you know, it's not going to really work that well. Um, so just to keep in mind, once you do start working with this kind of stuff, just watch out, you know, don't get too close to the zipper. But if you see, here's our finished product. Here's how our TP came out. 
I'm pretty pleased. You got a pretty good looking design here. Um, like I said, you know, like working with materials, you'll start to learn, uh, understand how they feel and like um, as far as, you know, like heat temperatures and, you know, like uh, which ones are um, uh, you can work with and which ones are really hard to work with. Well, once again, you know, I want to thank everyone out for tuning in. Uh, I've got a lot of good feedback about the show. You know, I, I've been really enjoyed getting creative with you guys. I hope you guys uh, learned a lot from, you know, like the little things I've shown you. Uh, here shortly, we're going to be bringing more segments. Um, next one up, is gonna, we're going to start beating. Uh, so hopefully you guys tune in, um, and thank you very much. I hope.